Mr. Messy was the messiest person you've ever met in your whole life. He looked messy because he was messy in everything he did. You could always tell where Mr. Messy had been because he left a trail of messy fingerprints wherever he'd been. Oh, yes. Mr. Messy was messy by name, messy by nature. Mr. Messy lived in a particularly messy-looking house. Paint was peeling, windows were broken, there were tiles missing from the roof. The flower beds were overgrown with weeds and the garden gate was off its hinges. And had Mr. Messy cut the grass in his garden lately? He had not. One morning, Mr. Messy woke up in his messy bed, yawned, scratched, got up, cleaned his teeth, leaving the top off the toothpaste. Had his breakfast, spilling cornflakes all over the floor, and then set out for a walk, tripping over a brush he'd left lying in the garden two weeks before. There was a wood behind Mr. Messy's messy house with the messy garden, and that's where he went for his walk. It was a particularly large wood with lots and lots of trees, and it took Mr. Messy a long time to walk through it. But he didn't really mind because he felt like walking that morning. So he walked, walked, right through the wood, until he came to the other side. And do you know what he found on the other side of the wood? Mr. Messy found the neatest, prettiest looking little cottage that he had ever seen. It had a lovely little garden with a stream running through the middle of it. There was a man in the garden clipping the hedge. He looked up as Mr. Messy approached. Morning, I'm Mr. Messy, said Mr. Messy. I can see that, replied the man, looking up and down. I'm Mr. Tidy. And I'm Mr. Neat, said another man, peering out of the house. Tidy and neat, said Mr. Tidy. Neat and tidy, said Mr. Neat. We're, uh, we're in business together, explained Mr. Tidy. And the people who own this house have asked us to do some work for them. What sort of work? asked Mr. Messy. Oh, we make things uh, nice and neat, said Mr. Neat. Tidy things up, added Mr. Tidy. Perhaps, uh, perhaps we could come along and uh, do some work for you, said Mr. Neat, looking at Mr. Messy, who was looking even messier than usual that particular morning. But uh, I don't want things neat and tidy, said Mr. Messy, looking downright miserable at the thought of it. Nonsense, said Mr. Tidy. Fiddlesticks, said Mr. Neat. But, uh, said Mr. Messy. Come along, said Mr. Neat. Off we go, said Mr. Tidy. But, uh, but, but, but uh, said Mr. Messy. But nothing, said Mr. Neat. And bundling him into their van, which was parked behind the house, off they went to Mr. Messy's house on the other side of the wood. Good heavens, said Mr. Neat, when he saw where Mr. Messy lived. Good gracious me, added Mr. Tidy. This is the messiest house I've ever seen in all my born days. They both said together at the same time. Better do something about it, said Mr. Neat. And before Mr. Messy could open his mouth, the two of them were rushing here and there about Mr. Messy's house. Mr. Neat hoed, and mowed, and pruned, and snipped, and clipped, and cleared, and dug, and made the garden look neater than it had ever looked before. Mr. Tidy cleaned, and primed, and rubbed, and painted, and mended, and made the house of Mr. Messy look tidier than it had ever looked before. Then they both went inside the house. Good heavens, said Mr. Neat for the second time that morning. Good gracious, said Mr. Tidy for the second time that morning. And then they set about cleaning the house from top to bottom. They brushed and swept and polished and scrubbed and made the inside of the house look neater and tidier than it had ever looked before. There we are, said Mr. Tidy. All finished, said Mr. Neat. Tidy and neat, said Mr. Tidy. Neat and tidy, said Mr. Neat. Mr. Messy just didn't know what to say. Then they both looked at Mr. Messy. Are uh, you thinking what I'm thinking? Mr. Neat said to Mr. Tidy. Precisely, said Mr. Tidy. What, uh, what we're both thinking, boy, they said together to Mr. Messy, is that, um, 
Now the house is so neat and tidy. You are much too messy to live in it. But, 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 but said Mr. Messy. But whatever Mr. Messy said was no use, and Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy whisked him off to the bathroom upstairs. It had been the messiest room in the house, but now, of course, it was as bright as a new pin. Then Mr. Neat got hold of one of Mr. Messy's arms, and Mr. Tidy got hold of the other arm, and they picked him up and put him straight into the bath. Mr. Messy wasn't used to having baths. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy washed, and brushed, and cleaned, and scrubbed, and combed Mr. Messy until he didn't look like Mr. Messy at all. In fact, he looked the opposite of Messy. He looked at himself in the mirror. You, you know what I'm going to have to do now? He said in a rather fierce voice. Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy looked worried. What, uh, what are you going to have to do? They asked Mr. Messy. I'm, I'm going to have to change my name, said Mr. Messy. <laughs> and they chuckled. And Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy chuckled. And Mr. Messy laughed. <laughs> and Mr. Neat and Mr. Tidy laughed. <laughs> and they all laughed together <laughs> and became the best of friends. <laughs> Thank you.